Do you really expect your relationship to change if you continue to do the same things? You've heard the saying, you do the same thing and you expect a different result. Well, it's time to make some changes. To build and maintain a successful relationship, it requires that you know as much as you possibly can about your partner. The more you understand a person's temperament, the more you realize it's not personal. That's just the way they are. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Dr. Joe Laird, licensed professional counselor. And today I'll be talking about all four of the temperaments. I'll do a recap. And if you haven't seen the other videos on the temperament, please go back and review them so that you can have a deeper understanding or more firmer foundation. So I hope you got the chance to take the assessment and read the information to find out about your temperament or your partner's temperament. And after taking the assessment, you should have discovered your primary or secondary temperament. And most individuals have a primary and a secondary temperament. The primary temperament will have a stronger influence on the behavior than the other three. And your secondary temperament will always modify the tendencies of the primary temperament in some significant way. For instance, my primary temperament is cleric and my secondary is sanguine. Because both temperaments are extroverted, I'm always full of energy. But the cleric side of me, I'm goal-oriented, so I accomplish whatever I set my mind on. However, my secondary temperament, which is the sanguine, is not always on task, and sometimes I just want to have fun and joke around. You know what I'm saying? There are several combinations, though, of temperaments, and once you've identified your primary temperament and your secondary temperament, you're ready to understand how the temperaments can impact your relationship. Now, earlier I discussed the character traits of extroversion and introversion, and when you think of extroversion, I want you to think about an individual that's extra. That is, the individuals have extra energy that they express outwardly, they talk a lot, their thoughts come out of their mouth, they are in a hurry, they are constantly on the move, they have to be busy doing something. And when you hear the word introversion, I want you to think about an individual that expresses their energy inwardly. That is, they think a lot and they keep their thoughts to themselves, not blurting them out like the extroverts. They're constantly planning and they're never in a rush. Remember, when you hear the word extrovert, think of outward expressor. And when you hear the word introvert, think of inward expressor. The cleric and the sanguine temperaments are both extrovert. The outward expressors. The phlegmatic and the melancholic are both introverted temperaments. They are inward expressors. So what happens when you combine your extrovert temperament with your introvert temperament? Well, that would be similar to combining jocks with the science club. You've heard the saying that opposites attract. Hmm. Let me think about that one. What happens when you match a cleric individual with a melancholic individual? You get two strong-willed individuals who will have some difficulty backing down. The cleric known as the bull will attempt to be the alpha and run over the melancholic. But the melancholic will outsmart the cleric by using facts and data to challenge them. The cleric will expect an answer immediately, while the melancholic will take their time to gather their thoughts. Hmm. This will infuriate the cleric because they will want to resolve the issue immediately while the melancholics, they will take their time before they present their case. The pressure from the cleric will cause the melancholic to feel overwhelmed because the melancholics are analytical and like to follow steps and think about every detail. The clerics are not into details because they think they know everything. They'll be frustrated because their motto is get the job done by any means necessary. Who needs details? What happens when you match a phlegmatic individual with a sanguine? The phlegmatic is in no rush to do things while the sanguine is always on the go and in a rush. The phlegmatic is reserved and lives a quiet, routine life, but the sanguine is the life of the party and impulsive. The phlegmatic is passive and does not like to say no to the sanguine, and as a result, the sanguine will unconsciously take advantage of the phlegmatic, running them over because they're selfish. What about pairing two introverts like the phlegmatic and the melancholic? Well, the melancholic has high standards and expectations, while the phlegmatic seeks to do the bare minimum and are passive procrastinators. What happens when you match a melancholic with a sanguine? You get a worrier and a carefree individual. The melancholic will have high standards and want to plan everything, but the sanguine will throw caution to the wind and could care less about standards. They will leave for a vacation without packing because they're impulsive and unconcerned about counting the cost. You can see how knowing your partner's temperament can help you to reduce some stressors in the relationship. Now, it's essential to know as much as possible about your partner, your family, your friends, or your associates 
before you decide to commit to them because it will prevent you from unnecessary harm. And let's face it, life is too short to attach yourself to foolishness. The more informed you are, the better decisions you can make. The good news is you came a long way. The bad news is you went the wrong way, J. Cole. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Knowing your partner's love language and temperament are some of the tools that can improve your relationship significantly. Not knowing your partner's love language and temperament can cause confusion. There are a number of tools available to grow your relationship, and I'll continue to create videos to provide information to help you become a better you. Before you get involved with someone, work on becoming the best version of yourself. If you're unhappy with yourself, you will never be happy bringing someone else into your life because happiness comes from within. That person will only provide a temporary band-aid of happiness until you are provoked and the real you shows up. Remember, what's on the inside will come out eventually. Get rid of your baggage before you commit to someone else because they will likely be bringing their baggage into your life, creating more headaches and trash for you to deal with. So that will do it for the temporary recap. I hope this information will help you in all your relationships. And if you like this video, please leave a comment down below, share and subscribe my channel, and be on the lookout for my next video on the attachment theory. Remember, the more you know, the more you grow. Also, life is what you make it. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed life. And don't forget to take the test. I put it in the link below. God bless you.